Today, I'm talking about topological phase transitions in functional band networks. Phase transitions are well understood in theoretical physics. A phase transition is characterized by a macroscopic change in, a, in the properties of a system uh, due to a microscopic change in the system. When you think about phase transitions, we always think about water boiling. So if you heat uh, water un until 100 degrees, like at 100 degrees, you have a macroscopic change. So we can have a change from liquid to gas. From a theoretical physics perspective, phase transition is characterized by non-analytic behavior of thermodynamic functions. Over the past 20 years, theoretical physicists try to, try to understand phase transitions under a topological perspective. In particular, it was conjectured that a topological change in the configuration space of a Hamiltonian system is associated with a phase transition. Another characteristic is a topological invariant for any polyedra vertices minus edges plus phase is equal to true. This is because the other characteristic is a topological invariant, and in this case is isomorphic to a sphere. In several papers in theoretical physics, it was shown that the other characteristic is related to phase transitions in classical Hamiltonian systems. By the other hand, phase transition can also be studied geometrically in networks. Eros and Henny discovered the so-called giant component transition. That means that if I keep attaching links in a random graph and increasing the probability p, I will find a critical probability value where a giant component will emerge. That means that after this critical probability p, uh, any other new edge that uh, I attach to the graph will be very likely a cycle. On the other hand, and actually that's why we are here in this conference, networks are actually beyond p-wise interactions. That means that instead of only have edges, we have triangles, we have tetrahedrals, we have all kind of simplexes that also encompass information of a network. So instead of only counting the links of a network, you also can count the links, actually the edges, the triangles, the tra tetrahedrons, and all the clicks of a network. That means that we can also associate a simplicial complex to a network. Put all this idea together, we may also realize that the phase transition that was previously studied by Edus Heine could also be studied in the context of simplicial complexes. It's very surprising that this generalization was only done a few years ago. This field is called nowadays stochastic topology. Let me now explain the meaning of the generalization of the giant component transitions for a simplicial complex and the impact that it may have for complex systems. After the giant component transition, when we attach a new edge to a network, we will be very likely that this edge will create a loop or a cycle. That's the case for the generalization for a simplicial complex. In fact, in algebraic topology, those loops are the so-called Betty numbers. That means that Betty 0 are the connected components of a network. Betty 1 are the loops or cycles of a network. Betty 2 are the cavities or voids of a network, and so on. We now move to the phase transitions in the simplicial complex of a random graph. In the same way that when I attach a new link in a network after the giant component transition, it's very likely that there will be a new loop in the network. If I attach now a high order structure, let's say a triangle, after a phase transition, it will, it will be very likely there will be now a cavity in a network. Now is the moment where we put both things together. If you can compute the bet curves and check the phase transitions in simplicial complexes, and at the same time you compute the logarithm of the Euler characteristics, 
you see that the crossover of the bed curves happens in, at the vicinity of the zeros of the Euler character. In this sense, the results of, from theoretical physics are analogous to the results in simplicial complexes. We are now ready to investigate these topological phase transitions in complex systems. Let's start with functional brain networks. We can actually compute the Euler characteristics and bad cures of functional brain networks and associate it with topological phase transitions. One important thing that you have to use now is the idea of a filtration. In a filtration, we start with an empty brain network and then we study how the structure of the brain network will change as we attach new edges and clicks that now are the synthesis as a function of the correlation threshold between two areas of the brain network. In contrast, in theoretical physics, we track topological changes and phase transitions by studying the level sets of a Hamiltonian as a function of energy, as illustrated here for the torus. We first analyzed the human connectome database. We computed both the Euler characteristics and the Betted curves for a large database of functional brain networks from the Human Connectome project, and we were able to detect topological phase transitions in those networks. We are now ready to make a connection between the global topological properties of a high-order network and its local geometric properties. Network curvature, a concept that was developed recently for networks, fulfills a discrete version of the so-called gauss bonnet theorem, which connects the local curvature of a network with its global Euler characteristics. Note that, in theoretical physics, the curvature of the potential energy surface is asymptotically null at the phase transition. We compute the curvatures for functional brain networks. We verify that the gauss bonnet theorem is fulfilled, as illustrated in this video and we obtain analogous results for the distribution of curvatures in theoretical physics. That means that, at the phase transition, we can say that networks are somehow flat. One question that emerges is whether topological phase transitions can be used as topological markers. That means, whether the critical points of the topological phase transitions could be applied to characterize different groups of brain networks. Let's now compare our results between glioma and controls. By comparing the results of both groups superposed, we see that, on average, the phase transitions are shifted to the right in the glioma group. Therefore, we can interpret this shift as a possible reorganization of correlation patterns in the functional brain networks of the glioma group. Thus, our results provide paradigmatic evidence for the use of topological phase transitions as topological biomarkers in functional brain networks. In conclusion, we merged ideas from statistical mechanics and stochastic topology, particularly phase transitions in simplicial complexes, to investigate phase transitions in complex systems. We found evidence that topological phase transitions could be used as a group-level topological biomarker in functional brain networks. Thanks for watching and I look forward to your feedback.